day and having a lot of anger. So, the backstory. <laughs> I was raised Jehovah's Witness, and I got married when I was 19. Um, and so it was basically, basically the first person that I really dated, that I had a long-term relationship with, because as a Jehovah's Witness, you... You basically get married, or you don't, or you can't be with anyone, so, um, yeah. So, we were really good friends, and there was a lot about our relationship that was really great. Um, especially, it seems like, what other people saw, even though we did fight a lot. And I know that other people saw that too. But for some reason, I always got the impression that... Well, see, a lot of... <laughs> the thing about our relationship was that... Like, mostly I fought. <laughs> and mostly he just, like, wouldn't engage with me. And so that makes me look like the bad guy all the time and made me feel like it too. But I just kept. My other option would have just been to break up, basically. Which is why I was fighting, because I was fighting to have that relationship. And because, according to Ghost Witnesses, also marriage just for life. And you do not, if you break up, if you decide to get divorced, you can never get married again. Unless the other person breaks the rules and gets remarried or has sex with someone. Like, that's the rules. <sighs> so fucking stupid. So, yeah, I was fighting for that relationship. I was desperate and frustrated and losing my fucking mind. And... Like, literally one year in, I started having panic attacks and um, anxiety attacks and, like, not being able to work anymore. And I was just, like, insanely depressed and it was the fucking worst. And it was really confusing because we were, we were good friends. And I always really liked him, you know? He was a really sweet person, and we had a lot in common at the time. And we could have a lot of fun together doing all kinds of different things. Like, we could do anything together and have fun. So, I don't know. That's what I thought I wanted, I guess. Plus the, we were both really into being a Jehovah's Witness. And not every in the one, not everyone that is a Jehovah's Witness is quite as excited about it. Um, <laughs> depending how long they've been in, usually. But we were both really young, obviously, and just thinking that we were gonna, that it was awesome, and that we were gonna be so happy being Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, so, yeah, one of the main things that I liked about him, other than just being a sweet person and fun to be with <laughs> was that he was super into being a Jehovah's Witness and he took everything super seriously because so did I and I was really annoyed about everyone else who cared about other things <laughs> besides being a witness uh, so yeah yep yeah <laughs> Okay, and so I've been doing a lot of astrology charts and stuff lately. I don't know how long it's been, maybe six months or so since I really started getting into it. And 
So I still, there's still a lot that I don't know. I keep realizing new things, and I'm starting to get to know all the signs, and a little bit about the houses, and a little bit about aspects, and a little bit about the ruler, and just, you know, like, everything, all different things at once. That's just kind of how I learn. I'm trying to make, a, like, a big picture with all the little pieces, you know, like, if you're putting a puzzle together, and you put together the outline first, and maybe a few pieces in the center to, like, um, give you some reference points. That's where the major parts of the picture are. That's the way that I learn. So, yeah, but I realized something super huge today, and it reminded me of a lot of stuff that I kind of tried to forget about. I, because I was the one that left, um, my first husband... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more to that story, but <laughs> because I was the one that left, and I also left the whole religion, and I left intentionally without making sure the person knew that I was going to leave, because it was a really weird situation. I could explain about that forever, but I'm going to try to stick to the point of my story. <sighs> Just because of all that, and my whole family was super mad at me because I broke the rules of the religion, and that's like the morality that we grew up with, was that you don't leave someone, one, two, well, no, no, one, you don't leave the religion, that's number one, two, you don't leave someone that you're married to, and you don't break any of the rules, three, you're a bad person. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> so, yeah, because of the situation, and it was super rough, and I, in my opinion, was just totally boxed into a corner, and I didn't really have a lot of traces about how to do it. It was extremely, extremely difficult, and painful, and just made me feel weak as fuck just to do it but like I had to do it you know so that was just like I I don't know I feel like from the outside when people don't know what it's like or what I'm like also because I hide my I don't even realize it but I think I hide how I'm feeling and how hard everything is for me really well. That's really confusing to me because I'm also really super blunt about it and I feel like if anybody was like the slightest bit perceptive underneath the surface, they would like realize by the things that I'm saying that I'm having a really fucking terrible time. But I think that I always like present myself as though I'm like like, I don't, I don't tell people the things that I'm really struggling with. I just tell them, like, the things I figured out. And so, I think that's it. Yeah. But I, anytime I'm having a real problem that I'm actually struggling with and don't know what to do, that's, like, horrifying to me on every level. Like, I feel completely disintegrated. So, it's not really something I can talk about easily about with other people or with myself. It's not very easy for me and everyone is constantly dealing with stuff like that but I just don't handle it well. And it's so strange, huh? It's so strange I don't handle it well and I give the impression that I'm handling it super well. I'm not trying to I just, I think it scares me so much that I feel really scared about scaring other people because I feel like if other, new, if other people knew how scared I was that they'd be scared or they would think they can't rely on me and I always want to be there for the people that I care about and 
I don't want them to feel like they're alone and they can't rely on anyone and like that everyone around them is just like falling apart and can't be any help because that's how I always felt like my whole growing up and there were so many people around but like by the time I was a teenager I decided every person in the entire world is just cracked and broken and that I have to be the one that is the that like pulls them all together or something anyway god so anyway so because of the situation being so like because of what I did being so against everyone I knew and my whole upbringing and everything that I promised and intended to do I did feel like I was a bad person for doing it even though I knew that I had to do it and so you know it's like I accepted it but I did always feel like I should take the blame for like it's my fault that things didn't work out you know and by the time that I left him I was so dead in my heart like I was in so much pain I mean I was super suicidal like like where it was in my conscious thoughts every day just during the day like it never went out of my conscious awareness the idea that I want to kill myself okay like like I've been suicidal off and on for most of my life and this is a particularly scary kind where it's like a very very normal unsurprising thought that I'm constantly thinking like I really wish I could die I really wish I could disappear I really think everyone will be happier without me I really think you know And, no, I didn't tell anyone that because for the same reason. Because I took responsibility for everyone. And I felt like everyone must feel the way that I do. And I don't want to make it any worse for them, basically. So. You know, plus... Well, I do try to understand my family and people's real limits and that they were trying their best. There were a lot of situations growing up where there were opportunities or times that I really needed help and people knew it and I was like, <laughs> like, it's so, it was so embarrassing. I was just like completely cracked and like literally falling on the floor crying and everyone just did nothing and no one ever talked to me about it or did anything to help me ever so <laughs> yeah and anytime I was having a problem and I like a real problem that I really didn't know what to do it's like other people were just uh, like uh, I don't know uh, you know that's like <laughs> pretty much all the time so, I just had no reason to tell anyone. There was no, it would have done nothing, <laughs> you know. There are so many things that people think I should have told them. And they're like totally overlooking <laughs> every time and every situation where I ever did and the results that I had and the way people acted and the fact that it accomplished nothing I'm not fucking stupid okay like and I make my decisions based on what's gonna work I don't just do things and 
some people don't, some people really don't understand that. They don't understand, like, the pressure and the limitations of having to choose. You know? Where, like, when you're a very emotionally, like, when you, when you're more impulsive or, like, you make, you kind of make your decisions based on emotion, like, like the water signs or the fire signs, um, even though it can be erratic or it can be really painful and stuff, there's a certain amount of just, like, you can't help but be who you are, you know? I mean, that's true for everyone, but it's kind of like sometimes that works out a lot of your decisions for you because you can't help but say how you feel or you can't help but act on how you feel and stuff like that. And mostly I can. <laughs> mostly I can. And I feel how I feel to myself and then I make a decision off of it. I uh, use that information and I decide what's most practical. I decide what's the most honest. I decide what's the best in the long run. And that's how I do things. Okay? So, I can't just... I can't just tell everyone everything they want me to tell them so that they'll feel like they know me. So they won't be surprised ever. And so they'll always understand everything about me. Even though that does fucking nothing for me. And... It's a pointless waste of time, and it just makes the other person feel better, but, well, also, it's killing me. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, back to my story. So, yeah, like, I always really took the blame for that relationship because I knew that I didn't regret it. I knew that he was my best friend and that we... That I didn't regret that relationship. We helped each other a lot. We learned a lot. And we got through a lot. And I needed him at that time. You know, we needed each other. So, I never regretted it. And I never hated him, okay? But there were some very serious problems in our relationship. And, okay, this is where I get to the astrology part. Because I'm... My Venus sign is in Gemini. Okay? This is like... A very, very empathic person. And Gemini is the twins, okay? They want to be your fucking twin. And it's so important to feel always connected. And to feel like you're unified. And to feel like we're a team. And to feel like... We get each other, we're together on this, you know? We're, like, yeah, like, we're best friends, you know? Um, but, like, romantically, this has very specific needs. And while I expected that we would have that because we were best friends in other ways, but it's so strange, like... Like, when it came to real personal intimacy, relationship intimacy, that's where it just, like, suddenly disappeared. And I, I finally made his chart, and he's, his Venus sign is in Aries, and I fucking love Aries, but... This particular placement with mine is, like, the most painful thing I've ever had. <sighs> because it's like, I love this person like crazy. I love being with them. We're best friends. We can work anything out. We can be together forever. And then the other person, only when you're alone, only when at, you know your most, like, vulnerable and private time together, they can't pay attention to you at all. They can't think about you. They just do whatever they want randomly and have no reaction to you. And, like, and then I didn't know a lot. Like, I learned a lot from that relationship about trying to make someone be close to me. So 
I'm not as aggressive or as, like, needy as I was in that relationship anymore. Because I learned that you can push and push and push and argue and argue and pick and pick and pick, and it doesn't fucking do anything. So, that, I'm really glad I learned that from someone who could stand up against it, because otherwise, I don't know, you know, might have been more difficult to learn my limits, you know? So I'm glad I know about that kind of stuff now, but fuck, it hurt. And it's like now, like when I can look at it in the realm of astrology signs and and with the recognition that everyone has their own needs and they're each equal, like he's not wrong for being that way. It's just that in an intimate relationship, it seems like what he most needed was autonomy and freedom and like being separate and like you know we're together like his favorite thing was just like watching tv or watching a movie together and he felt like that was like super family closeness and i was like what the hell we can't even talk or think you know <laughs> it's gemini is an air sign and it's like so much loves to talk and get on the same page and just have all the conversations <laughs> and he just like wouldn't and didn't even get it you know and that was horrifying to me in itself the fact that he didn't even understand why I would need that that just like blew my mind I was like what in the hell it never made any sense to me <sighs> so yeah that was extremely, extremely painful, and a huge incompatibility, and, well, I think that, I've been thinking about this lately, and I think, in the biggest picture sense, or in, in like, um, a definite sense, there's no such thing as incompatibility. Because everything, even opposites, have a lot in common, and you can grow. You're not, like, set, stuck, exactly, exactly the same forever. You just have a starting point, you know? So something that's super, super different from you might um, take longer to learn, you know, or be a longer path. And so you can't pick that on everything, you know? You can't make all your choices and always be in situations that are totally opposite from you because it's too much and it's it's not efficient it in fact that could totally keep you from making progress on anything and it's super excruciating and that's probably when people kill themselves and stuff because it's just not worth it if you can't enjoy your life at the same time okay so to me compatibility even though i don't think that any one thing like i don't think even that Venus and Gemini and Venus and Aries are like inherently incompatible and no one with those two signs could doubt <laughs> together could ever make it. I don't think that at all actually because I really think that it's all the pieces you know it's all the parts of who you are like where you started out from but it's also your parents what they were like and your family and your culture and everything that happened to you in your whole life that created some kind of strength or weakness all of those things that like, creates who you are and what you can deal with you know and what you need moving forward what you need to make progress it's so, like there are, there are a lot of limitations like specifications on you you know that's like the physical world is that things become solid and it takes time to change them takes and when something becomes the thing it's not that easy to just make it into a different thing like it has you uh, you have to be able to make the steps to get you know to do that like physical things and life and choices can be very permanent you know it's like we're all used to the internet now where you could just it's magical like you can have everything saved forever even if you delete it you can get it back and you know the undo button but life doesn't have an undo button 
in real life, physical life, doesn't have an undo button. If you scratch something, it has a scratch. You can't just unscratch it. You have to fix it, which is doing something new on top. You know, you can't. You don't get to take things back to where they were. You got to do something moving forward. All you have is what you have now. That's what you have to work with. You know, that's how life works. That's physical life. So, yeah. That's what I think about that. But I do think that he and I, at the time, and according to who we both were, and what we needed, but, you know, by the time we broke up, anyways, that we were incompatible. Also, I think when a situation makes you suicidal, you, that is good enough reason to say that you don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. Or that something needs to change. So, yeah. Anyway, so I've just been remembering what things were like and a feeling of being just insanely frustrated and hurt all the time and never being able to have any satisfying conversation about it never being able to communicate about what the problem was, never being heard, never being seen, never being understood. Oh my god. Yeah. He told me that my favorite word was understood because I would constantly keep saying, I don't understand, I don't understand, yeah, like, or I want to understand, I can't understand, I understand, like, understand, I guess, not understood, but, you know, before what that word. Oh, and even that made me crazy because I was like, what? Like, I was saying it so much because he didn't understand. And he didn't seem to understand that he didn't understand. He didn't seem to care that he didn't understand or even understand what understanding is and why it's needed. Fuck, it made me so angry. Oh, that was excruciating. You know, because, like, the worst part was being stuck. And thinking, I have to be with this person forever, so we have to f fix this. And at no point was it uh, an option in my mind that maybe we just aren't compatible. Like, I didn't even believe that was a thing at that time. Like, I was super religious and super into everything that all the JW stuff was teaching me. And so, based on their information... I believed that if God is expecting you to stay with one person forever, then it must be possible. Then if it's possible, and he wants me to do it, and it's going to be for my best, I'm going to do it. The end. Nothing to worry about. So, that's what I thought that was about. <laughs> oh, what that relationship in yeah, my life taught me different. And, oh my god. So when I left, I still believed it. I just knew, based on my current pain and suicidal level, that I could not stay there. And if I ever did kill myself, I would have been... It would have been just like when I left. Like, I would kill myself and they would have been like, I don't know what happened. I don't know anything about it. <sighs> that is just exasperating to me. I don't ever want to be in relationships with people again where they can't, they don't have a fucking clue how you're feeling or what's happening with you. Especially when I learned, like, I've learned a lot about self expression and, but in the way of, like, indirect expression, I guess, and how much, how much and in how many ways we express ourselves, and even when you're trying to hide something, you can't really hide it, there's evidence, there's always evidence, you know, it's like your fingerprints, you can't control that, that's not how you feel, but I guess I was thinking that because I read, I was gonna say handwriting, and they said that's like a fingerprint, whatever. But, yeah, your handwriting, there are just all these really intuitive and 
reasonable ways to tell how someone's feeling. Even though I understand not everyone has done handwriting analysis, read the books and stuff, so whatever, but there's like micro expression, body language, actual actions and behavior like does this person have depression symptoms, you know? God, people are so stupid about all this stuff. It drives me crazy. <sighs> anyway, so... Thanks for listening to my video. And all of my really frustrated... Expressions. And... It's good to get to talk about that at this point when I'm this far away and I'm in a really happy situation. I've got a lot of hopeful things going on. I think my life is going to work out. And that's the time when you feel safe enough to honestly face your feelings from the past and let them go. So, always doing that. <laughs> okay.